You are listening to Lee High Insider. I am your host, Benor Ayamvem. And today I am joined by Professor of Chemistry, Andy Ho. And Andy and I talk about all things chemistry as well as some of his life outside of school and outside of chemistry. And it's a great conversation. As usual, you're gonna love it. I will see you again at the end. Here's Andy Ho. Welcome to the show, Professor Andy Ho. Thank you. I'm sure we'll talk about chemistry a lot, but first, you know, what specific things about you today do you see as like reflections of your past experiences? Well, I think that you know, when I was a student a long time ago, <laughs> when I was in high school, you know, I was in all the honors classes, AP classes. So when I applied to colleges, I applied to the same types of schools that are Lehigh caliber. So I, I would like to think I have at least some understanding of what a lot of the students here had to go through mm. to get into the school in the first place because you don't get into Lehigh unless you're a really good student and you've probably done a lot of other activities outside the classroom. And so I do recognize that there's more to life than just studying and hitting the books. Mm -hmm. So I try to approach my class with understanding that I don't want you, I don't want any students spending all of their time on Chem 30. <laughs> Whether they do or not is a <laughs> different question. Yeah. But that's the intent. And also, you know, I remember when I was a student, there were certain things that I didn't do well because that's part of life. Mm -hmm. um, especially going to college, I think one of the hardest things to do is you have all this freedom. You're only in class for a f not that many hours a week and you can do whatever you want the rest of the time. No one's forcing you to do anything. So trying to find that balance is, is a challenge. But you've always like loved school and been good at it. I've always been, I've always gotten pretty good grades. Mm -hmm. You know, that <laughs> being said, I knew my strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I never took a music <laughs> class or art class because, really? well, if you've ever seen me draw, you know, I don't have any <laughs> artistic talent whatsoever. The atoms look pretty good. Well, circles I can <laughs> kind of manage. You went to UCLA. Yes, I did. And Harvard. Harvard for grad school. Harvard for grad school, yes. Which to me, and I feel like maybe to most people, is pretty impressive, right? But I wonder if it feels that way to you. Like, do you look at your academic background as big accomplishments in your life? I certainly think so. You know, I will say that Harvard, I think Harvard has a great reputation regardless. But I think for a lot of people, when they think Harvard, they think the undergraduate experience. But I think, yeah, I mean, UCLA was a great school. Yeah. Harvard's a great school. And, you know, I appreciated being able to attend both of them. What was it like being like a student specifically at both of these places? Like what was what was your own experience of these schools? Like what do you remember when you think back? Well, I could lie and say I was, <laughs> I was the coolest guy that was there my entire time. <laughs> no one would know. But you can lie. <laughs> that's right. No one can prove this wrong. <laughs> no, but I'd say that, you know, when I was at UCLA, even mm -hmm. at Harvard too. I did a lot of the typical college stuff. I hung out with people on in my dorm on my floor. You know, at the time, since I'm old, <laughs> the internet was not what it is now. We didn't have cell phones. But, you know, we had video games that we played. Mm -hmm. You know, we would watch TV, um, just sort of hang out, yeah. you know, party, that sort of thing. I did not do that much of it. I certainly did more of that when I was in the dorms, just mm -hmm. because... I was there. So I lived on the on campus for the first two years. Mm -hmm. And most students actually moved off campus their third and fourth years. And so once that happens, it's a little bit harder to um, hang out with people. Yeah. Just sort of by being there. You mm -hmm. had to put in a little bit more effort to do it. Which I did, but I don't think I was quite as social when I was a junior and senior compared to my first two years. First year you were social social guy yeah well, i tried i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't that social you know certainly i did have to spend 
you know, I had to spend time studying just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I think I probably spent a little bit more time studying compared to the average student. Why? Or, well, just because I cared. Well, I think everyone cares about their grades, but mm -hmm. in my mind, it's one of those things where if I didn't do well, I didn't want it to be because of lack of preparation. It's like sometimes you just don't know it or you don't understand it and it happens. You're not going to ace every class. You're not going to get 100 in every test and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to be in a situation where it's like I could have known it, but because I didn't bother putting in enough time, mm -hmm. I screwed up. So that's, you know, that was the sort of the undergraduate experience. Mm -hmm. Let's talk now about Lehigh about your experience teaching here. You've been here for 12 years, right? Oh, has it been that long? That sounds about right. <laughs> Feel shorter than 12 years? Well, everything becomes a blur. It's like mm. when I try to remember what's happened. Yeah. When I try to place the year, I'm not always right. Mm. It's sort of, well, there's certainly a lot of similarities. Mm. It's every class is different. Every group of students is different, but it's still teaching the same course. So yeah. There's some repetition. Does it get boring? I wouldn't say it gets boring. Um, yeah, I, one of the things I try to do is keep it interesting. You know, mm -hmm. it's not the same. Within the constraints of I have to teach a certain amount of material, mm -hmm. a certain type of material, I do try to mix it up a little bit. What specifically about teaching do you like? Well, I like, you know, I like helping students. I like interacting with the students, mm -hmm. you know, sort of like I know how, uh, I know chemistry, well, not just chemistry, a lot <laughs> of scientists have the reputation for being really hard, mm -hmm. really difficult. And, you know, if you're not super, super smart, then it's impossible to do well. You think your class has that reputation? I think so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know all the rumors, but mm. I've heard students say that, well, half the class fails, stuff like that, which is untrue have the class does not fail chem 30 that's correct okay <laughs> um, i think there will be an issue if half the class did fail um you know sir i just enjoyed the teaching part of it i mm -hmm. enjoyed you know working with the students and you know i like that more than i like the research that's how i decided yeah. you know i'd rather teach than work in a lab somewhere yeah and, and how do you approach teaching like um what do you, how do you achieve your goals? Well, I th you know, ultimately, I don't want my students to, you know, work 24-7 just to pass the class. Mm -hmm. So I try to, you know, set them up for success as best I can. You know, ultimately, I think it's my job to try to explain th the challenging parts about the course, mm -hmm. about the material, show them you know show them how to solve a problem because for certain parts of it if it's just a definition anything like that like they're paying lots of money for a textbook <laughs> use it um, it's otherwise what's the point mm -hmm. but certainly i think there are very few people who can just read a textbook and say i got it mm -hmm. so i couldn't i could never have done that when i was an undergrad like you need a teacher there to help you work through a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's my approach is I want to help you learn how to solve these problems specifically. And I realized that a lot of Chem 30 students are not going to be Chem majors, which is fine. I yeah, mean, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's, you know, find what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of the skills you learn in all your classes, they're applicable no matter what you do. It's like, yeah, you're right. You may never solve a chemistry problem after you take this course, mm -hmm. which is fine. But you are going to have to solve a problem at some point. And being able to problem solve, that's a useful skill no matter yeah. what you do in life. Unless yeah. you win the lottery and retire. <laughs> but most of us cannot pull that mm -hmm. off. What kind of relationship do you aim to have with your students? You know, I think... I care in the sense that I want everyone to be happy mm -hmm. and content with their life in general. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly I think it's something's wrong if all the students are miserable. 
which is not to say that you're going to have a stress-free life here. Like, mm-hmm. sorry, but <laughs> you know, when I took tests, I was nervous. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, you know, I knew I knew the time crunch of I have to write this paper, yeah. I have to prep for an exam. So certainly, it's not all going to be relaxed and you know stress-free. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, I don't want my students to, you know, really feel like the walls are closing in because they have so much work to do. Mm-hmm. So I, do, you know, I want them to do well. I want them to be, I don't want them to also be spending all their time locked in their room reading a book. Mm-hmm. I feel like college is such a unique time and you only have four years of college. Please do something outside of class. <laughs> There's so much more to college than just, you know, getting a good grade in a class. And so I, I would encourage them to do that as well. Just mm-hmm. uh, do something outside of class. Mm-hmm. But certainly I feel like in my, in the classroom, ultimately my job is I have to teach you the material, or at least try my best to teach you the material. Mm-hmm. And I do have to assess your understanding as best I can. Yeah. And I think there's no perfect way to do that. Mm-hmm. Certainly I think you could argue that exams, they have their strengths, they have their weaknesses, but I do what I can to assess their mastery of the material. That's what their grade is based on. And if I really felt that more than half the class did not understand the material at all, then they probably would fail. But that's <laughs> not the case. The most yeah. students do not fail. But you, you don't care about like being friends with your students? I think that that's not... That's not my role just because, well, part of it is if they're looking for friends, well, (laughs) they're surrounded by so many more interesting people than me. (laughs) No, I mean, I'm more, you'll see me in the classroom Mm -hmm. lecturing. And if you want to talk to me about, you know, class or, you know, something like that, I'm Mm -hmm. happy to set up a time to meet with you. But other than that, it's like, I wouldn't see myself hanging out with students afterwards. <laughs> you know, I think that's when you really build those bonds of friendship. Like when you're, not when you're necessarily listening to someone talk or mm-hmm. talking about how to solve a problem. It's, you know, chatting about just life in general mm-hmm. in a more casual setting. And that's not what I would be doing with the students. So you're, you keep saying that not half the students in your class are failing, right? Yep. So how do students in your class perform usually? Well, I think for the most part, they, I think they do well. They Mm. may disagree with that sentiment (laughs) since my definition of well and a student's definition of well Mm. may not be the same. What is your definition of well? Well, I would, you know, I'll tell you what I tell the class all the time. You know, an average performance should be in the B minus is typically the B minus C plus border. And that's pretty much always what happens every year. And so if that's the case, then that means half the class is getting a B minus or above. And in fact, more than half the class gets a B minus or above. So I know that if you're a motivated student coming from high school, if you're at Lehigh, you probably got mostly A's. So you might see a B as a disappointment, but it's not a bad grade. And so I think that, you know, the majority of the class getting a B minus or above, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. And we have, we do not have many, you know, D's mm. and F's I can usually count on one hand. Mm. So most students, they do well in the mm-hmm. class. And I think another part of it is, if you're moving on to the next class, what's really important is, did you learn what you needed to learn to succeed in the next class course in the sequence? And if you did, then fantastic. You're going to do well in the next class. And if it so happens that your Chem 30 grade is a little bit lower than what you would have liked, Mm -hmm. well, if you do really well in the next course and beyond, that's what really matters. You know, I know when I applied to grad school, I'm pretty sure they did not care what I got in freshman chemistry. (laughs) Which isn't to say the grade isn't important, but if you're doing well as you go, one or two grades that are slightly lower, Mm -hmm. you know, P 
people understand, like, you're not going to ace all your classes. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how many Lehigh students get a 4-0, but I'm betting it's not many, <laughs> which is fine. Yeah. You know, that's an unreasonable expectation. Mm. You're talking about the final grade, though, right? Because I always hear people in Camp 30, like, crying over the midterms and having a hard time with the midterms. Yeah, it's, it's because in the end, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. I do think that's something that students coming from high school are used to because at least when I was in high school, almost every assignment I had, there was a letter grade assigned to it. And at least in Chem 30, we don't assign letter grades to anything because it's all part of one big picture. So if you get an A in, on the homework, great. But that doesn't mean you're going to get in the course. Just mm -hmm. like if you get a C on the test, well, that doesn't mean you're going to get a C in the course because mm -hmm. there's other parts you have to consider. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, I realize in the moment it's very easy to focus on that one yeah. part of it. And if it's lower than what you expect, you know, of course you're going to be bummed out about it. But, you know, you have to, just have to remember that it's just one piece of the puzzle. And mm -hmm. if you do a little bit worse on one piece, then that just means you have to do a little bit better on the other pieces. And it'll mm -hmm. all even out at the end. Hopefully. So your advice to Chem 30 students is don't cry over your midterm grade. Well, I mean, hopefully <laughs> you'll do so well, you'll be leaping with joy. But mm. <laughs> it's more the idea that if you do poorly once, that does not torpedo your grade and you're doomed to fail. Mm -hmm. You just have to make sure that you learned a lesson mm -hmm. um, from bad performance yeah. if it happens mm -hmm. and sort of move on because everyone's going to have a bad test mm -hmm. or a bad assignment sooner or later it happens mm -hmm. you know i've gotten c's on exams c's and d's and i did not get a c in the course so <laughs> it is possible to recover mm -hmm. it's just more the idea that you have to re figure out what you did wrong yeah and then make a correction are you proud of your students yeah. I th well, I think the very fact that the students were admitted to Lehigh in the first place, mm -hmm. that's a big accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Lehigh is a very selective school. And I think that students who are, you know, taking these classes, they're showing that, you know, they're not taking the class just for the heck of it. Mm -hmm. They're taking the class because it's part of their, it's one step of the path towards whatever they're final goal is so i think i'm impressed by the fact that you know they are aiming high it's not i just want to squeak by and mm -hmm. you know just do the bare minimum they really want to do well because mm -hmm. they really want to they're high achievers who yeah. want to you know be very good at whatever the next step is in their journey i i've heard rumors that Professor Ho sometimes walks into the class and says, like, if you don't know this, this, this by now, you're going to fail the course or you're not going to do well in the course, myth or not. So that's an exaggeration. <laughs> I will say that if you don't know this topic by now, you're going to have a lot of trouble on the exam just because a lot of chemistry the content builds on what came before. And so what I think is really hard is if you fall behind, catching up is tough because it's not just you have to learn the material you have to catch up on. You also have to simultaneously learn the new stuff, and that's hard. Um, so I will, you know, I will say certainly <laughs> if you don't know this, you need to do what you have to to get a better handle on it. Otherwise... When you see it on the test, you're not going to be able to solve the problem. And that's, well, that's not going to go well. <laughs> I do think that there is a natural tendency to procrastinate, especially mm -hmm. because college students, you all have a lot going on in your lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what tends to happen is a lot of classes, they tend to have their exams around the around exact the same, same time. time. <laughs> so if you're hoping for that last minute 24 hour binge session get it <laughs> that's not going to work out so well mm -hmm. or i would argue that's highly risky mm -hmm. i mean if you pull it off great but that's usually not the way to succeed
how do you evaluate your performance? Do you, like, do you think you're good at your job? I'd like to think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think I'm perfect by any means. You know, part of it is two different people can teach the same material in a different way. Yeah. And one is not necessarily, one is not better than the other per se, but I know for some students, each student is unique and each student has their own preference. You know, some students are much better vocal learners. Um, they can just listen and that's how they prefer to absorb information. Mm -hmm. Other students, they'd rather write it down and read it. And that's how they absorb information. So I think different lecturers, we all have our own unique styles. And so for one student that, you know, my style might be fantastic. They might love it. And for another student, it's like, well, this is not how I would prefer to see it. I'd rather see it a different way from someone else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's just human nature. Yeah. We all learn differently. So, you know, if I, I'd like to think I'm doing a good job. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I certainly, if somebody says I prefer a different style, you know, that, that's not an insult at all. Well, yeah, some a different style can work better yeah. for you. And that's, that's how it is. There is no sort of universal, this is the one way to do it. Mm -hmm. And everyone's going to love it equally. Mm -hmm. And that's fantastic. When, when do you know you've done a good job? Is it like when the grades in the class are over a certain level? or? Well, I think there are certainly checkpoints along the way where if I can see the students, they look like they understand what I'm, what I'm doing. What they look like. They're just nodding. Yeah. <laughs> and they prove it mm -hmm. when they do well on assignments. That's when I know... It's, I'd like to think I had a hand in that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I know they've done well. How would you describe your personality? And how do you think your students perceive you? Do you think there's a difference in the two of them? Well, I think my the students, you know, for better or worth, worse, most professors are authority figures. So there's always going to be that sort of disconnect where you know, I'm not just some random person. Mm -hmm. I'm the professor, mm -hmm. so I'm supposed to be in charge. <laughs> and, you know, I'm the one assigning a grade. So they may f feel that, well, not everyone's going to get an A. Essentially, the most important thing about being a professor is all the students have to be treated equally. And so what that means is, you know, when I'm assigning grades or, you know, considering student requests, I have to be neutral. Mm -hmm. It's like I realize that some of you have busier lives and others, you know, life mm -hmm. happens. But in the end, like if I set a deadline, it has to be the same deadline for everyone. You know, some students, they don't have quite as much going on, so it's easier for them to um, reach that deadline others something else may be happening and it's harder you know that's unfortunate but that's you know i think that's part of life like you have to avoid procrastination so if something does happen you're not stuck with mm -hmm. i have this much to do and no time to do it and so i think students probably think i'm so you're not very like lenient with your deadlines i'm lenient in the sense that i give there's plenty of time to do the assignment, but because of that, I'm less lenient. Just because if I give you two weeks to do something, you're certainly, it's your choice to when you want, when you could do it. But if you wait until the last day and something happens, <laughs> like, well, you had two weeks and if you wait till the last day, that's on you. You know, it's different if, it's a two, you know, you only have two days to do it and something comes up. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. You know, the unexpected can happen and you can be in no condition to do something for two days. But if it's two weeks, then usually that means if it's affecting your work in chem, it's probably affecting your work in other classes as well. Mm -hmm. And that's, why, that's when we need to sort of talk to the higher powers just to make sure that you don't fall into a hole academically that you can't recover from. So I think I'm 
students probably think I'm a little bit harsher than <laughs> I think I am, but you have to ask the students. That. <laughs> Do you care about what they think about you? Do you ever go and rate my professors to see what the what they're saying? I actually do not go and rate my professor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do read my evaluations, mm -hmm. the high ones. Yeah. I actually wish more students would fill out the evaluations because the response rate is on the lower side. And it's not just me. I think most professors, especially in like the bigger classes, the response rate tends to be lower because mm -hmm. it's online. So it's pretty easy to forget to do it. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I care about their feedback. You know, mm -hmm. certainly I care about the constructive criticism. You know, it helps me see what I can do to make things better. Um, certainly I think I do care about that. Well, I think that I get their feedback through the evaluation form. Mm -hmm. If there's something that a student wants to say to me, yeah. you know, regarding the class or my teaching, I feel like that's the place to do it. You know, and that's where I'll read it. Okay. So I don't, yeah. So I don't go and write my professor, but <laughs> maybe I should. <laughs> when you're not chemistrying, what do you do? What are your hobbies? Well, when it's not ice cold and snow covered <laughs> outside, yeah, I do like to bike a lot. Mm. So I actually live very close to one of the rail trails. So I, I do like um, biking when I can. One of my favorite um, activities. Mm -hmm which is why I'm not a fan of winter because mm -hmm. I would freeze to death if mm -hmm. I tried biking right now. So what do you do now? How do you, when you go home, Well, do you just do more chemistry? No, I do not do more <laughs> chemistry. Um, you know, I, there's all sorts of streaming options. I have Netflix, I have mm -hmm. Disney Plus. Yeah, um, especially because movies, it's changing now, but for a while, you probably weren't going to see a movie in the theater. Mm -hmm. I know I wasn't. Yeah. And to be honest, a lot of movies, if it's not a spectacle movie, I think it's fine just to watch it at home mm -hmm. on TV. So that's, <laughs> and also, you know, ser streaming series I watch when mm -hmm. I can. I did watch the movie when I was a kid. Uh -huh. I watched Cobra Kai. Hopefully high school is not actually like that. <laughs> if it is, that's probably not a good sign. Mm. <laughs> you know, I watched, I am nerdy enough to be a, like a Marvel fan. So I watch a lot of the streaming shows from there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I grew up with the Simpsons, mm -hmm. so I'll mm -hmm. watch episodes of that yeah. when I get a chance. So if you weren't a chemistry professor, you'd be an actor or a director? I'd be an actor, except I can't <laughs> act. <laughs> what do you think you'd be? If I was not a chemistry professor. Yeah. Well... As boring as this sounds, I'd probably still be involved in something scientifically mm. <laughs> based. So Maybe a physics professor then, if you weren't doing a chemistry? Well, I don't know about physics. <laughs> uh, I was, certain parts of physics I was not good at. Mm -hmm. Maybe a pharmacist. A pharmacist. Yeah. Love that. Or if it was just sort of working with numbers, mm -hmm. it would have been a, a banker, accountant. Mm, really? Okay. Thank you so much for talking to me. Do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Anything you want them to know about you? I think we've had an hour of <laughs> conversation. Yeah. I'd say hopefully they're not listening to all of this in one shot because <laughs> I know during the pandemic, I had to record my lectures and, mm. and edit them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I was sick of the sound of my own voice <laughs> and far less than an hour. <laughs> Plus, you know, a lot of them, during Chem 30, well, they get to hear me <laughs> three times a week anyway. So how much do they really want to hear from me? Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking to me. And to those listening, this has been Andy Ho. And I will see you in two weeks. Thank you and bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Lehigh Insider is a bi-weekly show released on the Brown and White Beat on Spotify. The show was created by Benor Ayambem and produced by the Brown and White. Music in this episode was produced by DJ Zen at I am DJ Zen on Instagram. Follow at Lehigh Insider and at LU Brown White on Instagram. Visit www.thebrownandwhite slash Lehigh Insider for more information. 
Thank you for listening.